Okay, is my uh, screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are uh, discussing about Okay, we are uh, discussing about uh, some of the principles that are uh, required for a good product design and we have completed to aesthetic control and quality control. Okay. These were uh, some of the principles of good product design. Next, an important topic is the factors affecting the cost of product design. So this is uh, cost for product design and the cost was determined on basis of the value of the production. So each and every steps or each and every <coughs> departments that is coming under uh, the uh, work cycle or during that product development processes uh, a value is determined for all the operations that is carried out uh, for the development of the product and depending upon that value we are setting a cost okay uh, other costs that are coming into play is nothing but the uh, buying and selling of various components for various products and some of the cost factors that are affecting the cost of uh, products are recurring production cost non-recurring cost, external production cost, and sales cost. These are the four types of cost that is involved or that uh, uh, affects the product cost in the end. Okay, so we will look at each and every production cost. So what is the recurring production cost? So the term recurring itself means nothing but repeating. It is repeating again and again. So the cost is known as recurring production cost. And it is written here. <clears throat> the recurring production cost is a cost that is incurred rep repeatedly throughout the manufacturing lifetime of a product. So it is being uh, repeated again and again. So mm -hmm. such types of cost are known as recurring production cost. And what are the types of recurring production cost? So uh, some of the types are production and labor cost, then production materials cost. So all the materials, raw materials, the working process uh, products etc so many materials are there for packaging some materials are there the components when you are voting the, they are they are all coming under materials so they must be uh, incurring some cost and that is also coming under recurring production cost then process cost is uh, each operation that, that depends upon the machine or the uh, amount of energy electrical energy it requires to run that machine so these are all coming under the process cost then uh, overhead cost that comes uh, as a total total cost in on basis of these three costs that we have mentioned labor cost overhead labor cost uh, material cost overhead material cost etc so all the total cost are coming under the overhead cost and uh, outside processing so outside processing is nothing but subcontracting and concurrent engineering and all uh, we have studied earlier so subcontracting means we were uh, giving uh another company the work of creating the component that is required inside the product so that you can uh, neglect or eliminate the time that is or you can reduce the time required for the product development so you can mm -hmm. once another company takes and takes up and builds that component you can use that component inside your project or inside your product for faster completion so that is what is known as subcontracting Concurrent engineering also is uh, same thing, but it is not done by the company itself. It is done parallelly in the industry itself with other department. It is done at the other side of the industry. So such components which are made on the other side are parallel to the production process that is being run without disrupting that production process is known as concurrent engineering. So it is coming and I will uh, tell you during that time. So these are all called outside processing. So these are done outside the industry or this then parallel to the industry. Hence it is called outside processing. So these types of costs are all recurring costs. So these you can't avoid them. They will always be repeated. So 
if you are starting the development of a uh, new product once you have set all the uh, cost that is incurred after that is then repeated such costs are called recurring production cost then non recurring cost what are non recurring cost from the term itself you can understand it is not repeated as like the recurring cost okay and these are one time cost that generally occurring during the developmental stage of product design so each time a product is designed these cost only occur one time during that developmental process so some of the cost that is included in non recurring cost are research and development cost so once you are researching and developing a product you don't have to research it again unless there is any modification or unless there is a technological update or unless you want to change uh, or add a new feature on basis of a gimmick or uh, on basis of the competition that is occurring for that product okay uh, until then you don't have to do any other further research and development because it is already done and after that uh, testing only you are producing that product so these the cost that is incurred for researching and development is one time cost that is generally during the product development next is prototyping again we are doing the testing right so in the testing we are running many trial and error methods we are <coughs> testing the product for any failures etc are being done and this is also a one time cost next tooling tooling in the sense you are uh, using the tools or the machines for production you are building it into the industry or uh, you are implementing it into the industry these are all part of one uh, operation so these are done during the beginning of the industry or you are setting the machines or you are setting the equipment tools etc for for that particular operation and these are done one time uh, on basis of the failures of the tools so if there is any failure you have to replace it so until then you can uh, use that product and that for uh, that tool or that machine can be used for a longer period of time so it is a one time cost and these costs are incurred during the capital cost or capital investment in the company during the development of the industry itself so these are all non recurring cost okay next uh substantial savings can be generated out of the life cycle of the product via cost analysis of non recurring factors and can ultimately prevent product redesign so we are uh, forecasting uh, the product life cycle right so if you are pro, uh, forecasting such a product life cycle one of the advantages of that is nothing but uh, one of the advantages is uh, nothing but you can um <coughs> uh, Uh, you can uh, analyze the cost that is required uh, for the capital then afterwards uh, on that uh, basis of the forecast you can uh, obtain what is the amount of profit that will be generated during the life cycle of the product and depending upon that you can have a savings for the next capital or for the next maintenance of the machine or the next replacement of the machine okay that is what is known as substantial savings so some savings can be predicted over the life cycle of the product also it will be generated some amount will be generated it may be higher or lower than the forecast but still there is some uh, savings that will be occurring some profit that will be occurring and this can help uh, in further uh, non recurring cost if it occurs and uh, it can prevent product a redesign so such is the uh, thing so a redesign once a redesign occurs obviously the product life cycle is coming into the decline stage that is what is happening so if you are modifying it or if you are uh, producing a new gimmick or if another product entirely replaces the function in which this product was present so these are all conditions in which the product life cycle is coming into the decline stage so once it happens you will not uh, get sufficient profit in that product so it is being completely into the mode into the complete decline stage okay so uh, once that occurs then obviously a product redesign comes and you will be occurring non recurring cost and non recurring cost occurs during development and prototyping 
So that is what is happening there. Next comes external product cost. So external product cost includes logistics, packing, currency exchange, tax, and customs. These are the costs that is included in external product cost. Logistics in the terms of uh, transportation, transportation of the uh, product via air, uh, water, or land. So it uh, depends. Uh, depending upon that, it uh, terms how the product cost determines during uh, different log uh, logistics. So you know, we can ship uh, or via air, you can transport each and every commodity. So additional shipping charges or transportation charges are incurred into the MRP value of the product. Okay, so you have to give or pay external price for that. So that is coming into external product cost. Next comes the packaging, some amount of packaging depending upon the quality of the product. So if there is a glass type component present inside of the product, obviously you have to provide more packing to protect that uh, product. Maybe bubble wrap it or pro you know, provide a thermocol packing inside. So, so these are all different types of packing. So depending upon the type of packing, the, obviously the price will be more. So like right, last type items, the price will be more or the value will be more because it has to be provided with sufficient packing to prevent it from damage. So that is coming under packaging. Then currency exchange in the sense of uh, transportation in other countries. So there is a difference in currency and the value of the currency may be higher in one country rather than in the other country. There is obviously a difference. And that also comes into an external product cost. So the, uh, the product cost in, uh, uh, in, in another nation like America and all is higher than when compared with the Indian currency. So there is sufficient difference and the value of the product will be higher in the US than that in the yeah, that in our country. So that is what is coming under currency exchange. Next comes tax and customs and these are incurred from the uh, country in itself, from the country itself and these also uh, contribute to additional product cost. So we have a term, heard of the term of tax, right, GST, etc. You have heard and these are all some of the external product costs that is incurred in the product. And the last one is uh, sales cost. So what are sales cost coming under? So they help account for the cost of inventory. So that is another one. Customization, warranties, and any associated administrative or sales cost. So these are the cost that is incurred during sales cost. And this is also affecting the product cost. So what are the costs involved in sales cost versus the cost of inventory so how does cost of inventory affect there so i have already told you for holding the uh, stock inside the inventory sufficient amount of prices incurred uh, to keep that stock inside the inventory and that cost overhead cost selling price etc we have learned before and that is coming under the cost of inventory next uh, for customization, any additional features that you have to uh, give. So one example is that you have many variants of car suffering, right? Uh, medium variant, high variant, etc. of each and every car. So uh, depending upon that variants, you can see multiple features being added. Maybe the presence of an alloy wheel or maybe an airbag or maybe the presence of a media player, a sunroof etc so that are additional features for a higher value so that is what is coming under customization and depending upon that the product uh, price uh, differs so a medium variant obviously has a lower price when compared to a higher variant because it has more customized products in it so customization also acts in the or factors in the uh, additional cost or the cost of the product Next, warranty. So depending upon the warranties, additional warranty, you have to apply for a warranty, warranty of a laptop or warranty uh, for uh, a mobile phone, etc. You have to pay additional money. So initially, some warranty may be present, maybe a period of one year or one and a half years. Then for additional warranties, you have to then give more money, right? So that also is incurred to the uh, maximum retail price of the product. So that is also depending there. Uh, so this is also another type of sales cost.
okay so these are the cost that is in, incurred inside first one is recurring production cost the cost that you recurs or repeats uh, during the developmental phase of the uh, products and it repeats again and again so, so some examples are raw materials labor cost process cost overhead cost and outside processing cost next non recurring cost non recurring cost it is happening only one time it's a, it's known as one time cost and some of the costs that are included during uh, the product developmental stages are research and development cost prototyping cost tool tooling cost and expedited transport or production lead time so these are some of the non recurring costs then comes external product cost where it includes logistics packaging currency exchange tax and customs and finally sales cost which help for account for the cost of inventory customization warranties and any associated administrative or sales cost okay these are some of the costs that are incurred during uh, or factors that affect the cost of the product next comes the important topic that will be uh, also asked that is the product life cycle so uh, the period during which a product starts from the development stage to the point where it declines from the market is known as product life cycle and we have already termed it as in four stages and the four stages are first is the introduction stage growth stage maturity stage and the last final one decline stage so when you are explaining write all these stages then you have to draw this graph that is shown here so you can see how the graph is going here during the introduction to the a certain point of the maturity phase the product life cycle or a product sales that we are occurring during time sales with time graph is shown here and during that the sales will be higher up to a medium portion of the maturity phase you can see here up to this middle it is being there is a rise and a rapid rise is during growth stage so there is a small rise only during the introduction stage where then a rapid rise in the growth and uh, then up to in the maturity stage there is a gradual increase and then it will start decreasing during the decline stage once it starts to decreasing it is known as decline stage it is in the time of decline stage so uh, during that time the sales will rapidly decrease so this is the product life cycle so when discussing about each of the stages during the introduction stage we are introducing the product into the market so at that time the customers or the market or the people in the market is not aware of such a product and they are getting to know it okay that is why it is called an introduction stage and we will be getting smaller and smaller sales but still there will be a sales because you can see how the graph is increasing here there is a small increase right during that time uh, uh during that time the products uh <coughs> during that time the products are being sold but not at the particular demand coming into the growth stage so there is a sufficient um, amount of production but uh, it depends uh, upon the how well the product is being advertised so depending upon the function only so some customers are stating the function and for them it is being used and after that uh, you can see right uh, obviously a product is being launched in the market a few people know it who is very interested in that or who is needed of that function is uh, obviously a needed of that product and for that purpose during an introduction stage the price of the commodity or the product will be very high and after a few years you can see how the price decreases right and that is basically the product life cycle that is coming here and once it is saturated in the market obviously the price will decrease then um, that is during introduction stage so in the introduction stage we will be uh, the cost that is typically high is the advertising cost and uh, do this advertising is necessary because we have to somehow make the customer aware of the product that is coming into the market or that is already present in the market only then the customers will be aware and then they can uh, obtain that product or they can suggest that product again and again thereby increasing our orders or increasing the sales so that is the basic principle and this comes in the introduction stage next is the growth stage in the growth stage uh, 
we have seen how it, uh, in the growth stage there is a rapid increase right and this rapid increase during this rapid increase the people are made aware completely over here after the awareness a rapid increase happens where everyone prefers that product so you can see initial launch of the ambassador car is shown here and after the growth stage when everyone is being used or maybe uh, in movies and all they are advertising such a car and people prefer that car uh, again and again and you can see how everyone starts to purchase it so that is coming in the go growth stage so there is a, a rapid growth in sales and profit you can see here by rapid growth and sales and profit is occurred during the growth stage so this is the longest phase so this is the uh, region where everyone takes some time uh, or the product is present at a longer stage or we will obtain more sales and profit the margin of profit that we occur uh, that we will earn is more higher in growth stage because it is a uh, big stage so uh, in or conventional times or older times the growth stage of a product was significantly higher because of the smaller technological updation that is occurring but in modern times due to the higher amount of replication or more uh, research is carried out or more uh, implementation of new technology obviously a product life cycle is shortened okay that is the uh, problem present there and uh sufficiently the growth stage will be small during a shorter product life cycle so if you have a larger growth stage you can incur more profit margin and obviously the product life cycle will be a greater so it will be present more time in the market so in the growth stage it is always uh, characterized by rapid growth in sales and profits next comes the maturity stage in the maturity stage the market is already saturated with the uh, product and after the saturation people uh, tend to move towards newer designs or newer developmental features or new newer uh, technological features they require so depending upon that they will outdate it or uh, they prefer new ones so people move on to new and new gimmicks right and uh, at that stage in the maturity stage a gradual increase of sales and profit is occurring but at one time it will then stop or it will become constant and uh, this comes under the maturity stage and after that stage until it becomes constant after that stage it will gradually begin to fall the sales will fall with time and the profit that is incurred Uh, will be less and less and you will finally come in a loss before that we will stop the production of the uh, product that is why the graph is closed here so you are decline and once it comes into the decline stage you are uh, nullifying the production there because you can't get any additional profits or you will incur more loss there because people are not preferring it so at that stage you will cancel the production of the product so that comes into the decline stage so here is the example here is the ambassador car so once everyone is uh, using it and it is saturated you can see in today's modern world it is gradually in the decline stage and uh, it is stopped in production so these are some of the stages so the first one was growth stage second one was maturity sorry first one was introduction stage the second one was growth stage third one was maturity stage and final one was decline stage so you have to uh, write the four stages and also draw this graph when this question is asked okay next is concurrent engineering so under concurrent engineering it is not uh, related to subcontracting subcontracting is dependent on the component being produced by another company or we are buying the com commodity from another company that is coming under subcontracting but under concurrent engineering we are uh, developing the product okay the components that is required for the product is fairly done or when the production cycle uh, product development process is being done in the initial stages we are already doing other works related to the component production parallel to the uh, 
product development stage so we are running it pra parallelly so that once there is an assembly of the product or the uh, final assembly of the product is being done the components will be available and this is available only if you are uh, producing or uh, if we, only if you are producing the components earlier uh, parallelly to the production cycle stage so what one of the advantages is nothing but we are reducing the time for the product production process so that is the advantage of using uh, concurrent engineering and it is in it is done by integrating all the developmental features so during that planning stage or during that production planning stage we are planning how the product has to be assembled or what all operations has to be carried out or what all components has to be produced uh, sorry a present and depending upon the components that is uh, present we are looking at if all the components can be made in the industry parallel to the production of the product itself so we are looking upon that so that is known as concurrent engineering okay so under concurrent engineering we are reducing the time so how do you reduce the time so initially we are planning okay initial we are planning and from that planning phase we are going to the requirements and after the requirements are stated we are analyzing and designing the product after a design we are implementing it into uh, into uh, into production and then finally it is deployed without a testing and evaluation that is what is coming here so we are neglecting the steps here sir. so yes Sir, I am Agashi. Sir, I am left out. Sir, I am the charge or what? Sir, current is not. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, so what we are doing here is that the components that are being produced has to be implemented into during the uh, complete cycle or uh, during the production cycle. So we have to. Uh, do the work as early as possible and for that purpose we are initially planning it and that planning uh, cycle is reduced and finally uh, based on the requirements analysis and design we are implementing it fastly and we are deploying it directly without this testing and evaluation and these parts testing and evaluation are already done during the initial part so initially we are doing in uh, normal industrial engineering we are doing is we are uh, having some requirements design implementation then we are verifying it and finally we are maintaining it that is what is being done this is known as the waterfall technique in which each and every step is done before moving on to the next step but under concurrent en engineering we are cutting in the process so this is the normal process and we are cutting in the process and eliminating this testing and evaluation phase so it is basically in the concept of a just-in-time method but here the production is done much earlier okay it is not done on basis of the order but it is done earlier so this can be done during an emergency situation or when you require products as early as possible so that is uh, coming under concurrent engineering. Okay, next, uh, some of the economic aspects of design. So, what are some of the economic aspects? So, how uh, does economic uh, factors affect the product design? So, there are basically five types of economic concepts. The first one is supply and demand. Second is scarcity. Third is opportunity cost. Fourth is the time value of money. Fifth one is purchasing power. So what is uh, supply and demand? So these are economic factors affecting design. Okay. So uh, this is what is known as a demand here. So the customers are requesting the product that is needed to be uh, needed for them, and that is fed to the uh, customers on basis of the supply so when demand is there we have to provide a supply okay and depending upon the demand if there is a high demand obviously the supply has to be increased and if there is a low demand you don't have to have such a high supply so there is a balance between the both 
there is always a balance between the both it is supply must always be done to meet the demand okay and some uh, factors that affect the supplier demand are the speculation of future developments advances in technology so speculation of future developments are nothing but uh, we are forecasting it right forecasting some of the supply and demand so one of the problems with forecasting is nothing but it is based on a prediction and it may or may not be ha happening actually in a real life if it is happening it is okay there is no problem there but if it is not you will be faced with some problems uh, when as we are trying to satisfy the demand and there will be some problems there so that is coming that is one of the factors of future developments then advances in technology if there is a technological update or if there is another competitive product that is present people will obviously prefer that uh, commodity and our commodity or our product will be going into the decline stage so that also affects the supply so if you are producing more um, more uh, products in the supply uh, uh, than the demand that is coming obviously you will incur more loss okay that is what is happening here and then shortages and surpluses in domestic and international market so there will be some of uh, shortages present if there is shortages present in the supply obviously you can't meet the demand and that will uh, that will affect the do domestic and international markets okay so this uh, this is coming under supply and demand next is the scarcity so the term scarce means nothing but there is only less of that uh, resources or the resources are limited that is what is known as scarce so when scarcity occurs obviously we cannot keep up with the demand so if there is a scarcity occurring you have to increase the supply or uh, the supply has to be increased to meet up with the scarcity so that is what i have mentioned earlier about the balance there must be always a balance between the demand and supply if you have more products you incur loss if you have less products you can't meet with the su sufficient demand and people will prefer your competing company so that will be further a loss so that is coming under scarcity so uh, under scarcity you have only limited uh, resources and you can't meet up with the or keep up with the demand that is uh, occurring next is the opportunity cost and uh, opportunity Okay, opportunity in the sense is trade-off that is mentioned here and trade-off means that in order to gain something you have to give up something else. So one factor that is shown here is time and money. So sometimes you require a product for the customer and the customer is requesting that product and another uh, competing company is also producing that product. So if you want the customer demand or if you want the customer to always suggest your product, you have to produce uh, the product as early as possible okay if two co companies are there and they are producing a similar product the company that produces the product first will earn the customer requirement and also obtain the customer demand but the problem of early production obviously incurs more money okay the investment that is done for earlier production of the product will depend on the money okay and that uh, money is here what is uh, termed as trade-off so you have to give up money if you want to gain the demand there or if you want to uh, gain the time there so you are reducing the time and obtaining the order by you have to spend more money and that is coming under opportunity cost and this is another uh, economic aspect in product design then comes time value of uh, money so a time value so we have already termed uh, mon money on basis or uh, the mrp of a product on basis of the value of the product so the value was determined by all the operations carried out the materials that is being used and all the recurring non-recurring sales cost etc all these costs are included in the maximum return price of the uh, product and obviously value is based on all that a particular cost that is uh, incurred in that product okay 
and depending upon the time obviously uh, the product in the introduction stage will have a higher price but the product in the decline stage will have a lower price because so the sales is uh, less there so obviously we will decrease the money to attract more sales so that is the purpose there so depending upon time so there is a time during the introduction stage to that decline stage and depending upon the time the value of the product is reducing or the money we have to in incur for keeping that product in our industry is more that is why here depending upon the time the money is money is increasing but the value is decreasing so that is what is coming of a time value of money okay and the last one purchasing power so uh, purchase, uh, purchasing uh, the term that is uh, termed here is an inflation and inflation is the point at which where scarcity of resources or scarcity also product occurs and during that time obviously the price of the commodity increases so when there is less amount of the product present in the um, market obviously the price of that uh, product will be higher so it can uh, on increasing that price uh, only people with money can buy that product so that is what is known as purchasing power the people that has the power to purchase that product on basis of the money they uh, they get that is coming under purchasing power so uh, obviously a product that is or the amount of product that is lessened in the market will have a higher price that is why we can see variations in the price of many things okay many commod uh, commodities and uh, you you have seen various products even our daily uh, foods etc uh, this has various changes or, or or the materials that you buy for the food okay these are all having a uh, different stages of price uh, variation or there is uh, so many price variation occurring and this is due to the inflation there so there will be, if there is a limited amount of that uh, uh, that said pro product or a said material then obviously the price will increase and those with the higher power uh, purchasing power can only purchase it that is why it is termed as purchasing power so some of the economic aspects that control design are supply and demand second one is scarcity third is opportunity cost fourth is time value of money and fifth is purchasing power okay next is a cvp analysis and that is based on the problems that we have to discuss and that we will do in offline class so uh, based on these all topics these are some of the important topics that is coming in first module and then the important one is the problem that we will discuss during offline class so i'll wind up the class today